Welcome everybody to the DFTTK workshop. This workshop is, suppo is supported by the NSF POST project. It's called the Open Source Ecosystem for Materials Science, OSMATS. My name is Equilio from Pennsylvania State University. We would like to thank IBM for providing the cloud service for the workshop. So NSF POST project uh, it's for a program called the uh, uh, POST. The title of our project is called A Path to Sustaining a New Open Source Ecosystem for Material Science. And the abstract of this uh, project is available here. If you, go, if you go to this link, or you just type this 222-9690 search on NSF website, you will see the abstract of this uh, project. It's starting uh, this month, this year, and it's a one year project. For phase one, uh, after this one, we're going to apply for phase two. This is a joint project between Pennsylvania State University and the nonprofit Material Genome Foundation. The workshop itself is organized by Material Genome Foundation with the support from IBM and Penn State. The objectives of this uh, uh, project uh, are as follows. Harness the power of open source development for the creation of new technology solution to problems of national and society importance and enable the growth of existing open source materials research tools into a sustainable and robust open source ecosystem, OSE. That's the keyword of this program. So I want to say a few words about the Material Genome Foundation. It's a nonprofit organization incorporated in 2018 in Pennsylvania, the United States. It's co -found, it was co-founded by me and Richard Otis and who is the main drive behind this open source ecosystem. The goals of the MGF, Material Genome Foundation, are to promote computational approaches in science and engineering and support the development of computational tools and databases. And we have three major action items for the foundation. First one is organized workshops. As you can see, this one of them, we had quite a few before and provide the cloud-based services for your workshops. For example, if you have some tools, you would like us to help you to organize workshops, cloud-based workshops, we can do that. The third one is to develop open source ecosystem for materials science. That means if you have tools, open source tools, you would like to be part of this ecosystem, we'll be more than happy to work with you to put them together. Okay, the reason we have this kind of thing activities it really it goes back to the civilization as everybody knows that uh, the human history uh, has these uh, uh, several ages named after the materials first one stone age which is natural materials and we have a bronze age uh, it's man made materials copper 12 percent of weight percent of the tin or 20 25 percent of tin there are two types of bronze alloys and of course, now we can we understand why is twelve percent, why is twenty twenty five percent, and of course another one is iron age, a, which is human made iron carbon alloys, and we also know that because there's man made materials, we had several industrial revolutions, which is uh, we call it industrial revolution one point zero two point zero three point zero in terms of steam power, electricity, and computerization, and now we're in the third, in the fourth industry. A revolution, we call it industry or manufacturing or materials all come together is digitization. If you look at the digitization of knowledge, it's basically for materials, particularly all the whole industry is manufacturing. You have to process materials to form products that serve one or multiple functions, and the key are the product materials, and those are controlled by the phases we have. So the knowledge of phase stability becomes very important in all this manufacturing, even goes, goes back to the Bronze Age and it goes to the Iron Age, right? And there's blacksmiths and also, as I mentioned, the 12% of tin. Well, I, maybe maybe some of you are not so clear why 12%, not, not 11%, not 13%. Why 12%? Okay, that's, a, that's related to the phase stability and the property and the, the strength properties. And then if you look at the phase stability, we'll go, we'll go back to the thermodynamics by Gibbs. Of course, we have some of them way before that, but Gibbs uh, it, it was the person to put the first law and the second law together. Okay, that's foundational and made all future uh, thermodynamic investigations possible. Then about 100 years later, it, we get the digitization of thermodynamics by Larry Kaufman created the catheter based material design 
a framework and another 50 years we talk about it but i'm writing a paper the next 50 years okay why well, i hope my paper publish very soon for that okay so there's one fundamental question is that is thermodynamic is for equilibrium only and if you look at the textbooks that's a typical kind of uh, agreement in the community but actually it's not right let's look at that if you look at the first law it doesn't say it's, it's equilibrium or not but if you look at the Gibbs equation in 1870 it is because it doesn't have the entropy production but if you take the second law rigorously you actually get another term here which is a driving force for internal processes and uh, now you can extend the Gibbs uh, energy to include this term the key thing is how to get this term, right? How to get the free energy that was calculated that comes in uh, by Larry Kaufman about 50 years ago. And Ksi here is the internal state of variables. So you can talk about the internal state, which are not equilibrium state. The example of Ksi, we have a lot of things. That, uh, for example, it's a non-stable crystal structure like BCC copper in the solution of the BCC ion and the copper. Or the ordering, you have internal degradation of uh, nickel, aluminum goes go to different sublattices, and the polarizations, the internal one, and the defects. Okay, so you put, uh, this is what we study in material science, or in physics, or in chemistry. Uh, part of how those internal degree of freedoms affect uh, the properties uh, we have. Okay, Kaifan method is basically the model, this one, with internal degree of freedom, for energy. We can do, because uh, it's a model, you can also do other properties. Like mobility, that's why it's a huge database that many people use. And other two other properties, how about interfaces? That's going to be very interesting too, which are actually already existing in the commercial databases, like SomoCAC and Pandat or other databases. Then in the community here, if for some of you not familiar, uh, we have uh, three major events. We have an annual conference, it's, uh, it's annual, annually, annual conference. The next one is 50, number 50, will be in Boston. Hope some of you will come. Then we have a private foundation, which is the financial backup of our, our community. We give scholarships and awards. But your students here, you come to the work conference, we support you. And we have a cover journal. And then we we'll have two of daily basis, right? As, the, as many of you know that we have some very successful commercial uh, codes and databases, some of the facts is CompuSum, GMAT Pro, and Matacac. They are commercial ones, but very successful. Major companies uh, in the world uh, use those tools. Then we also have open source ones too, like Open Cafad by Bu Suman and Soma Chemica by, a, by the Canadian group. And then we have PyCap SBA. There's another type of workshops we run uh, through Metro Genome Foundation. I just give one more slide about the Cafad model. It's really a model is a function of uh, free energy as a function of temperature, pressure, composition, and internal degree of freedom. And we get the derivatives from free energy, give us a single phase property. And then we get the equilibrium, get it between one, between two or more phases. The properties. So you see that one. This one is equal to zero, okay. But that one is not equal to zero, okay. That's the difference. Then it starts with the pure elements, the binary term, and multi-component systems. As you know, that the commercial database is like twenty or even thirty elements in those databases. When you get these databases, then it's that the material design. You can calculate the equilibrium. You can calculate driving force. You can calculate all the physical chemical properties. So the first and the second derivatives. Okay, that's what we call a material genome. Yeah. And the, the challenge we have now is that we need enough tools, right? The tools that we have, we, the, the one had before, it's not sufficient it's because it's one way process. Okay, but if you want to modify something, we get a problem. For example, if you want to modify one of the beginning problem element, you have to change many things. That's where we created a, a tool and the data sets in you know, order to improve this kind of modeling experience. We have data generation tools. Today we're going to talk about DFTTK. We also have some machining, machine learning codes which you can use, you can install. And then we'll have, have, also have databases collected. This one is not open yet, but it should be hopefully, hopefully we open very soon. But this is open and you can also contribute to those data sets too. And when you get the data, have to process them. So I pack up an SBA to process them and it does uncertain quantification. So then that's why we formed the Material Genome Foundation, try to put them all together. So we have all this knowledge in the community uh, preserved and continue, continuously develop uh, the tools and databases. So. As I mentioned, all these are open source. So you're welcome to, to download them and make your contributions too. 
Okay, so as I mentioned in our MGF, it really have this kind of data. You see, we have the MGF tools, but we want you to contribute to us too. Okay, community tools, data into the system. And uh, so we can cover this uh, open source ecosystem for material science. And uh, we, we really want to help you to, 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 to have your uh, tools uh, to be a broadcast uh, the workshops for the community. Okay. For the ecosystem now, we have data, right? Generation, we have machine learning, DFT, and we also have the final element the method too. But experiments is always important too. We have to do that one. So we created this kind of data ecosystem. You started with this, uh, a, a, we got a portal data, then into the processing, you generate a database, then design materials to process into the service, and into the material recycle too. Then generate more data. The key is that all this data generated can be put in back into this uh, data ecosystem. With that one, uh, we, we call ourselves the ocean of data structure. The ecosystem including the first principle calculations is very, very important and the CAFAT modeling with machine learning. And uh, we do have a paper which if you're interested, talk about all the properties we want to predict and what we want to do next. And we also say we maybe can even reach further to the kinetic, some, some, some kinetic properties people think uh, they are, but actually they are a, a very related to the free energy derivatives. Okay, I hope that uh, you will enjoy this workshop. And uh, you will also work together. We will work together to create this uh, data ecosystem uh, for material science engineering. With that one, I will close my uh, introduction. If you have any questions, please let me know. We can ask you now. If you don't have a question, we can have Dr. Yuan to continue the, the details of, uh, of the workshop. Uh, this, this, as, as you know that, uh, uh, this workshop will, will be recorded and uh, it's free of charge because of the NSF support and IBM support. Uh, so the recording will be posted uh, on the YouTube channel. Okay, there's no question, no more question. And you should have got an email uh, from Dr. Richard Otis to access the, of course, this one Zoom already. Another one is the cloud system, okay? So you, you, when you are listening to the talk, I'll make sure you can get into that system so you can run this, uh, see all the material, uh, materials uh, Dr. Yuan prepared and you can download them, okay? Give a copy and uh, for yourself. All right, I don't see any questions. I, I will let Yuan to go from here. Okay, thank you, Professor Liu for your nice introduction. So, now I say, let me start. Uh, I mean, before start, we should not forget, you know, the previous workers for this project. In fact, the basic framework is by Brandon uh, Buckland because he graduated but a couple of years ago. Then another visiting scholar, Ming-Ching Ming -Ching Liao, he continued to work. This, they two basically set up the Python framework for the two, uh, for this uh, uh, 